In this lesson, I'll show you how to graph a cubic function manually without using a calculator. This is question number one. We have three questions in this series. The first one is easy, the next one is medium, and the last one is the hardest. The question reads, the function f of x is a cubic function given by f of x is equal to negative bracket x minus 2 to the power of 3. The first part of the question asks to factor f of x. Notice that our function is already in factored form, so we don't have to do any further factoring. Question B says, find all the zeros of f of x and their multiplicity. I'll discuss that term in a minute. So to find the zeros of f of x, I set f of x equal to 0. So for question B, I'll set f of x equal to 0. Substitute 0 on the left side. 0 is equal to negative parentheses x minus 2 raised to the power of 3. Let's solve for x. So I'll divide both sides by negative. That will cancel out that negative. And on the left side, 0. So we have x minus 2 raised to the power of 3. To get rid of this power of 3, we third root both sides. And doing that on the left side makes it still 0. And on the right side, we have x minus 2. And now bringing this minus 2 over to the other side, we end up with x is equal to 2. Therefore, our only root is 2 and 0. That's our only root. They also ask for the multiplicity. Multiplicity means how many times a particular number is a 0 for a given polynomial. For example, in the polynomial shown on your screen, the 0, 3 has a multiplicity of 4. 5 has a multiplicity of 1, and 8 has a multiplicity of 2. Although this polynomial has only three zeros, we say that it has seven zeros counting multiplicity. So in our particular case, the multiplicity will be 3. So you can make a note of that. The multiplicity here is 3. Next, we have to find the domain and range of f of x. To find the domain, we can substitute literally any x value, any real value of x, into our function, and we will get an output. Therefore, the domain consists of all real numbers. On the other hand, the range, which is always the more difficult one to find, also consists of all y outputs. In other words, this will go to negative infinity along the vertical axis and positive infinity along the vertical axis, depending on the x that you input. Lastly, in question D, they say use the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, and other properties of the graph to sketch the graph of the function. Now, we haven't found the y-intercept, but that can easily be found by setting x equal to 0. So for question D, I'll set x is equal to 0. And if I set this equal to 0, I end up with a negative 2 raised to the power of 3. That's negative 8. And then multiply that by a factor of negative 1, we end up with positive 8. So we have a point at 0 and positive 8. That is our y-intercept. In addition, they refer to properties of the graph. Now, one of the properties with cubic functions is that if the function has a leading negative factor, such as in our case, then the function will go like this. In other words, if this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis, your function will start up at the top left corner and then make its way down to the bottom right corner. Now the opposite is true if this were positive. It would start down here and it make its way up to the top right corner. Keep that in mind when we graph. Let's place the points that we found, namely 0 and 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up here, and our only root, 2 and 0, along the x-axis. So we know that our curve needs to flow through this point and that point. Now, as I mentioned, since we had that leading negative 1 factor, it's going to start up here somewhere and make its way down here. So we can assume that it will move like this. And of course, you can be more specific. This is only a sketch, but if you really wanted to, you can pick points from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to positive 2 and find out what the y outputs were by creating a table. We don't need to do that for points to the left of this one because we know about that property of cubics. Being negative means that it starts at the top left corner. So I'll put arrows here and here. And this sketch represents a graph of a cubic function. Make sure that you watch question two, which is a more difficult example.